Hi guys. In this video, we'll take a look at intersections of modulus functions, modulus equations and inequalities, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So how can we determine the intersection of modulus functions? We've seen that we can find where two functions intersect by determining when they are equal. Let's say we have two functions. The first one is y equals x squared plus x minus 2. And the second one is y equals minus x squared plus 3x plus 2. If we'd like to determine the location of these two intersection points, then we need to solve the equation x squared plus x minus 2 equals minus x squared plus 3x plus 2. When we solve the equation, we get the solutions x equals minus 1 or x equals 2. If we can find the intersection points of linear modulus functions, then we can solve modulus equations. Let's say we have the graph of y equals the modulus of x plus 1, and the graph of y equals the modulus of 5x minus 3. If we wish to locate the intersection points here and here, then we need to solve the equation modulus of x plus 1 equals modulus of 5x minus 3. When we do this, we find that we get x equals a third or x equals 1. We'd like to develop a strategy for finding the intersection points of linear modulus functions. So how do we deal with modulus equations and inequalities? Firstly, we have a convention with the branches of modulus functions. Let's look at an example. Let's say we had the graph of the modulus of 2x minus 1. If the coefficient on the linear function is positive, then the right branch is called the positive branch, and similarly, the left is negative. So here we're dealing with the modulus of 2x minus 1. Because the coefficient of the x term is positive, i.e. 2, we call the right branch the positive branch and the left branch the negative branch. Similarly, if we had the graph of y equals the modulus of 2 minus 3x, then we label as follows. If the coefficient on the linear function is negative, the right branch is the negative branch, and similarly, the left is positive. So here we have the modulus of 2 minus 3x, the coefficient on the x term is minus 3, which is negative, and so we label the right branch as negative and the left branch as positive. We can use a graphical approach to find the intersection points of linear modulus functions. Let's say we had two graphs. Firstly, the modulus of x minus 2, and secondly, the modulus of x plus 1. If we label the branches using the convention we developed above, we have both of these as negative and both of these as positive. Now we will see why the convention is useful. If we wish to find the intersection point located here, then we can actually write down a non-modulus equation, which we can solve very easily. The equation will be x plus 1 equals minus x minus 2. The reason for this is that we can see graphically that the intersection point lies on the positive branch of y equals modulus of x plus 1 and the negative branch of y equals modulus of x minus 2. Hence we write down the equation x plus 1 equals minus x minus 2. This allows us to solve equations involving linear modulus functions. If we wish to solve the equation modulus of x plus 1 equals the modulus of x minus 2, then we are seeing graphically that there's only one intersection point, and that intersection point pr occurs precisely when x plus 1 equals minus x minus 2. Therefore, x plus 1 equals minus x plus 2. This corresponds to 2x equals 1, and therefore x equals 1 half. We can also solve modulus inequalities by first finding the intersection points. Let's suppose we were asked to solve the inequality 2 minus 3x all modulus is less than the modulus of 7 plus 2x. We can graph these two functions on the same axes, i.e. this one being the y equals the modulus of 2 minus 3x, and the other one being one over here, the modulus of 7 plus 2x. Locate the intersection points, 
label the branches on the modulus of 7 plus 2x we have a positive x term and therefore it's positive on the right and negative on the left it's the opposite for the modulus of 2 minus 3x because we have a minus 3x a negative x term so it's positive over here and negative over here if we label the two points 1 over here and 2 over here to find the first one we need to solve the equation 2 minus 3x equals 7 plus 2x. This is because this intersection point lies on the positive branch of both modulus functions. When we solve this equation, we get the answer x equals minus 1. If we look for the second intersection point, this must occur when we have the minus of 2 minus 3x equals the positive version of 7 plus 2x. This is because it occurs on the positive branch of the modulus of 7 plus 2x, but the negative branch of the modulus of 2 minus 3x. When we solve this equation, we get x equals 9. The inequality will be minus 1 less than x less than 9. And it's a strict inequality because the original inequality was also strict. We can write intervals like these in terms of modulus functions. In the simplest case, the modulus of x being less than 1 is equivalent to saying that x is between minus 1 and 1 strictly. So if we're given the inequality minus 1 is less than x which is less than 9, as we had above, we can subtract 4 from both sides to get that minus 5 is less than x minus 4, which is less than 5. By symmetry with the above, we can see that this implies that the modulus of x minus 4 is less than 5. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to sketch the curves y equals the modulus of x minus 1 and y equals the modulus of 2x minus 3 and hence find their intersection points. The first step is to sketch both curves separately. The first one, y equals the modulus of x minus 1, looks like this. It has an x-intercept at 1 and a y-intercept at 1. The second curve, the modulus of 2x minus 3, looks as follows. It has an x-intercept at 3 over 2 and a y-intercept at 3. The second step is to sketch both curves together. The first curve, the modulus of x minus 1, is less sloped than the second one, the modulus of 2x minus 3. If we now label these graphs, the third step is to identify the intersection points. These clearly occur here and here. The fourth step is to identify the branches of the curves. Remember that we have a labelling convention for the branches. In this case, both curves have positive coefficient x terms, and therefore the right branches are positive and the left branches are negative. The fifth step is to set up equations. If we label the two intersections as intersection 1 and intersection 2, then the first equation will be minus 2x minus 3 equals the positive version of x minus 1. This is because the first point corresponds to the negative on the 2x minus 3 branch and the positive on the x minus 1 branch. The second equation will be the positive of 2x minus 3 and the positive of x minus 1. This is because the second intersection point occurs on the positive branch of both curves. Step 6 is to solve the equations. If we solve the first equation, we get x equals 4 over 3. If we solve the second equation, we get x equals 2. The seventh step is to find the corresponding y values. We need to find the y values because we're looking for the intersection points. To find the y values, all we need to do is to look at one of the two curves and plug in the x values that we know based on solving the equations. The simplest one is y equals the modulus of x minus 1, so we'll use that. For the first one, again, the y value is the modulus of the x value minus 1. This, of course, is the modulus of 1 third, which is just 1 third. For the second one, the y value is the modulus of 2, the x value, minus 1. This is the modulus of 1, which is just 1. The last step is to write down the answers. The first intersection point is 4 thirds and 1 third, and the second intersection point is 2, 1. 
So the next example asks us to solve the equation modulus of 2x minus 5 equals modulus of x plus 4, this time algebraically. The first step is to identify the strategy. The strategy is that if we square both sides, we can remove the modulus signs. So the second step is to square both sides. We then get, by looking at the original equation, 2x minus 5 all squared equals x plus 4 all squared. This removes the modulus signs because the values are certainly positive of a square number. The third step is to expand the squares. On the left hand side we get 4x squared minus 20x plus 25 and on the right hand side we get x squared plus 8x plus 16. The fourth step is to simplify into quadratic standard form. We get 3x squared by looking at the x squared terms, minus 28x by looking at the x terms, and plus 9 equals 0 by looking at the constant terms. The fifth step is to factorise. We get 3x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 9, and that, of course, equals 0. The sixth step is to write down the answer. By solving this equation, we get x equals 1 third, or x equals 9. One thing we should always do is to check that our answers solve the original equation. Recall that the original equation is the modulus of 2x minus 5 equals the modulus of x plus 4. We should check that when we substitute in each value that it certainly solves the equation. When we put in 1 third, on the left hand side we get 2 lots of a third minus 5, all modulus which is the modulus of 2 thirds minus 15 thirds. And this is the modulus of minus 13 thirds, which is 13 thirds by taking the modulus. The right hand side is the modulus of 1 third plus 4. This is the modulus of 1 third plus 12 thirds, which is the modulus of 13 thirds which of course indeed agrees we can take the modulus. So that one's fine. With x equals 9, we also check. On the left hand side, we get 2 lots of 9 minus 5, and then all modulus, which is 18 minus 5 modulus, which is the modulus of 13, which is 13. And on the right hand side, we get the modulus of x plus 4, so the modulus of 9 plus 4, which is again the modulus of 13, which is 13. So both of these solutions are indeed solutions of the original equation, but this does not always have to happen. Our last example asks us to write the inequality minus 4 is less than x, which is less than 10, in terms of modulus functions. The first step is to find the midpoint of the endpoints. The way that you work out the midpoint of two numbers is that you add them together and divide by 2. You find the average. This of course is 6 over 2, which is 3. The second step is to find the distance to the endpoints from the midpoint. Let's take one of the endpoints, which is 10, and then we can subtract 3 and find that the distance between the endpoints from the midpoint is 7. It's the same from minus 4. If you go from 3 to minus 4, the distance is 7. The third step is to rearrange the inequality. Again, we have the inequality minus 4 is less than x, which is less than 10. And the best way to do this is to subtract the midpoint, 3. And what you end up getting is 7 and minus 7. Notice that we always end up with x minus the midpoint is between minus the distance and the distance. The fourth step is to write down the answer. By using a modulus, we get the modulus of x minus 3 is less than 7. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snappy smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.